Good evening, mortals. Welcome back to our Crimax podcast. Tonight we have a very special one for you. It's going to be our very first serial killer. So with that in mind, please hide your kids because it will not be suitable for anyone under the age of 13. Technically, true crime is not for kids anyways, unless you're me as a child. But yes, not suitable for anyone under 13. Oh yes, for sure. And we all know about your trauma. (laughs) Which one? (laughs) Good point. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. So tell us a little bit about this first before we get into our riveting fun fact. So today's case is our first ever serial killer. It is on John Wayne Gacy. Isn't he Most, the movie star? That's just John Wayne. Oh yeah, um, good guy. He's actually named after John Wayne, but his name is John Wayne Gacy. I took my notes referring to him as John at first, but normally I refer to him as Gacy, so I may say it back and forth. But he's a first serial killer. Most people know him as the fried chicken KFC guy who also happens to be a clown. Well, fried chicken. Yeah, but what's our fun fact for getting to the case today? All right. I've decided to go with a killer of our own. The very big, biggest lizard on the planet, the Komodo dragon. Ew. Oh, yes. And they're great, great animals because they mostly let nature take its course. You know, when we think of killing... We think of just, you know, they get in and they rip things to shreds and be done with it. But the Komodo dragons, they're very smart. Uh, It's been debated over years that whether they have venom or whether they don't have venom. But it has been proven that they do have a sort of venom in their saliva. But it's not anything powerful. All it is is a anticoagulant. So basically, like, whenever you get a nick or they, you know, all they have to do is bite their prey, cause a little bit of scratching, and it just won't stop bleeding. After all they have, all they do is just scratch their prey, and then they just sit there and just follow their prey around for days. Eventually, the, you know, the wound will get infected due to all the bad bacteria in the dragon's mouth, and just over time, it just keeps bleeding and bleeding. So it gets infected, the prey gets sick, and then after a few days, weeks even, you know, it'll just lay down and succumb. So Komodo dragons are great predators, and I love them just because of the fact that they are lazy as can be. They just sit there, scratch their prey, and follow it for weeks, and wait for it. No, I hate the suffering. Just get it over with, you're going to kill it. Oh, they do, they do. They just wait until until the prey has no fight. That's just so bad. They suffer the whole time. I don't like that. It's like getting sick. I mean, I guess, technically, but like... You don't always die, but if there's a dragon tracing you, you're probably going to oh, die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're pretty fun. That's a weird one. Yeah. I would think they would just eat it on sight because they look so bad and stuff. No. 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 Oh, gross. Oh, well. Thank you for that fun fact today. Oh, it was yeah. definitely different. Oh, Are you yeah. ready to get into today's case? Oh, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, so today's case is on John Wayne Gacy, who is not the movie star, even though there is a Gacy movie, which I did watch, and I don't recommend doing research and watching it, because all you're going to do is point out the flaws. Yeah, I tried to watch it. Couldn't get into it. Oh, it was not great. But John Wayne Gacy was born on March 17th, 1942. His parents were a stay-at-home mom and a World War I veteran dad who also worked on cars. Now, I wouldn't point out the fact he's a veteran, other than the fact it might be important because he's kind of an angry dude. And he's also the middle child with two sisters, so he was the only son in the family. Whole man in an estrogen ocean. Ew, that's weird. What? <laughs> okay. Now, because his dad was kind of angry, violent, and a drunk, John had a really bad relationship with his dad, actually, like, terrible relationship with his dad he was way closer to his mother which made his dad think he was kind of a sissy he always beat up on him for no reason had a really bad problem with anything he did and just saw him weaker as anyone else he wasn't the man that he father like expected him to grow up to be so he was always trying to get his father's approval for stuff it didn't really work now john when casey was more fragile than other kids he had like a heart condition this was not officially diagnosed but he spent a lot of time in the hospital for this So, again, making him seem more weak than other kids his age, so he couldn't really live up to sports and everything like anyone else, especially growing up in, like, high school and such. Now, unlike most serial killers, John actually loved animals. It's a known fact that 
Serial killers are known for harming animals before they move on and progress to human beings. But John actually loved animals. He also had an interest in sexual activity at a very early age, which is not normal. He actually was charged or, like, accused of fondling a young girl with another boy when he was in middle school. And um, it's said that he was molested multiple times by his father. There's no proof of that. We never heard it exactly from John Wayne Gacy himself, so... I'm not sure if that comes into play, but he had sexual interests at a young age. So in 1962, John Wayne Gacy decides to move out of his parents' house and live on his own. He actually didn't even graduate high school. He just decided to move to Vegas. Now, he only stayed there for three months, and he got a job as, guess what? A mortuary assistant. And it's said that he was in shock because he decided to lay in the teenage boy's casket with him and kind of cuddle the body. He got in shock from the weird situation he had put himself in and decided to come home immediately, like the next day. Yeah, we all gotta discover our fetishes somehow. Never know what you like until Are you, try you into it. corpses? No. You're a corpse, maybe. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I've watched The Corpse Bride way too much. Oh, we watched it together. It's so good. No, no, no. It's just desensitize me. So after John got back to Chicago from Las Vegas, he decided to go to business school. He had no high school diploma, but he was still able to go to business school. And then he soon after got a job as a shoe salesman in Springfield, Illinois in 1964. He met a co-worker and got married nine months after they met. Her name was Marilyn Myers, and by 1967 they had two kids, and her dad owned a bunch of KFC locations, so John Wayne Gacy got to be the manager of these locations. He's living the dream right there. It's an American dream. What's the American dream? Get married, two kids, and all the chicken you can eat. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so he seemed like he had the perfect American dream life, right? But he tended to like prostitutes, especially male prostitutes. And oftentimes when he was managing the KFC locations, he would hire underage or very young boys to work. Some people saw this as him trying to get the youth to get a strong worth ethic, um, but he was flirting with them behind the scenes, so I think it was for his own pleasure there. Now in 1967, 15-year-old Donald Warhez was sexually assaulted by him, and Gacy made him perform oral acts on him. Now, a lot of people would think he runs the cops immediately. That's disgusting, right? But Gacy had a way of manipulating these young boys. He would give them $50, which I did do like a little transfer thing to see what it would be like in like now money and it's right under four hundred dollars to shut your mouth so that's like good money to children technically it would be right under four hundred dollars to open your mouth that's disgusting <laughs> that's disgusting that's yeah okay you're right but he would pay them and then they would also do magic tricks so gacy would oftentimes have a pair of handcuffs on him he would put the handcuffs on himself see that he'd get out of it and then be like, oh, there's a trick to it. I'll show you. Put the handcuffs on the boys. They couldn't get out of that. There was no trick except the trickery of him. So they would get out of the hand. They couldn't get out of the handcuffs, and then he would do things to these younger boys. But again, he paid them off. People were scared to be labeled as raped, especially to like do things, especially back then the gay stuff. So no one actually said anything until later on after this happened to a few other boys. Then the boy named Donald actually accused him. And like try to file charges on Gacy but after he paid another worker from KFC to attack the young boy and make him drop all the charges he was actually caught for that too so John Wayne Gacy was actually charged with sodomy for that case and again charged for trying to like bribe the kid into dropping all the charges so things didn't work out for him so he goes to prison congratulations Gacy your first trip to prison Woo! <laughs> He was charged with 10 years, and guess how much he served? Not enough. 18 months. Yes, the justice system prevails. Yeah, right? <laughs> it always happens that way. He was a model prisoner. He had, like, interviews because he was the head cook in the prison. Actually, the interview, it's on YouTube. It's really weird to watch because I'm like, after this, he kills so many people, but he seems like a trying to be upstanding citizen, trying to seem reformed guy. So he was like a model prisoner. Everyone liked him, and he was a lead cook in prison. So when he got out after 18 months, he got he got a job being a head cook, lived with his mom, and he was on parole after he left prison. There was another assault case in 1971, but the charges got dropped. To me, that case would break your parole, being accused of another crime, but it didn't affect it for some reason. So he got a house in Cook County with the help of his mother and got married to a woman named Carol Hoff. 
He started working in construction, and once he was manager of that construction place, he started hiring a lot of younger boys again to work for him. He was a cook who got hired in Cook County. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I bet you that, that assault charge, it's always the cook, and I guarantee you, somebody complained about the food. Okay, that's just a weird thing. <laughs> what? I'd word rage on somebody. I mean, maybe he did get a complaint, and then you know what? He decided to do construction after that. Changed it up. Oh, man. Somebody's going to complain about a wall. Complain about a wall? Hammer to the face. Yeah, but this is also the same time he started working as Pogo the Clown. How do you go from a cook to a constructor? Construction. I mean, he was a big-looking guy. I have to say, a figure of construction yeah. just all over the place. Yeah. Especially in a place like Illinois that was, like, went, growing. I guess it went based off of looks back then. I guess. But anyways, based off of looks, he also decided to get a part-time job as a party clown. That Started did. out with the name Patches, ended up with Pogo the Clown. Did he have a pogo? Did he have a pogo stick? I don't know. He was kind of big. I don't know if you could get on a pogo stick. I mean, I guess you can. I don't know. I've never been on a pogo Why stick. Why do you judge big guys, man? My parents always thought pogo sticks were dangerous, so I never got one. And now I don't, I'm too scared to do it. <laughs> Bet you Hurley could get on a pogo stick. Hurley from Lost? Yeah. I love him. <laughs> he's so great. He's, such a, he's a gentle giant. Anyways, in 1975, his sister-in-law saw that Gacy was bringing home younger boys to the garage because, you know, they were working for him and he would bring him back sometimes. And she just thought that Gacy was cheating on Carol, his wife. But it turns out, like, it was a little more than that. Now, after this, Carol did find out that Gacy was bisexual. She did not take it well. And after some more time, they did end up getting a divorce. But he did come out as bisexual finally, which I think is good. You know, Bisexual between his wife and little boys? I mean, I think it's, it's great to know your identity. Don't be a pedophile. But yeah, like, tell your wife if you have interest in other stuff, especially if it's kids. Like, no. So she can leave. And she did. That was good for her. So John was taking these young boys that was working for him in construction, doing these magic tricks and taking advantage of him all he could. Of course, it did go farther than magic tricks. There were a lot of chains and ropes and like a blanket on the floor in his garage. It was super creepy. But after that, the boys became more frequent. Now, one boy named Timothy McCoy was convinced to leave the Greyhound bus station and stay the night at John's house. So, John's story is that that morning, there was a tussle. He saw him holding a knife against him when he woke up. And it turns out this boy had made him breakfast. So, he was just, like, holding the knife he used to make John breakfast with. But John saw this as a threat. Apparently, you know, allegedly, this is his story. Claims they got in a tussle and John ended up killing him and then burying him in the crawl space of his basement where only he went. And it was kind of, that's just the first claim to him murdering someone. Further than just a sexual assault. That escalated very quickly. It really did, didn't it? But, I mean, whether or not it's true or not, it's usually how serial killers oh, yeah. get started completely by accident, then they get a taste for it. And then he had breakfast after that. You kidding me? He killed someone and they ate the breakfast. You might as well eat what the kid made you. I mean, I... That's... I would. How would you just not kill someone? No, I'm just saying, man. If I allegedly accidentally killed someone who made me breakfast... Don't let the breakfast go cold, man. At least have it. Oh my god. <laughs> you can't you can't freak out and figure out what to do on an empty stomach. He covered his body in concrete. That's what he did with it. Oh, that's kinda of smart actually. I mean technically yes, but a lot of people do that and still get caught. So it's not that smart. How about Should've you just put not... some lye on it and then concrete? We it. will get to the lie, actually, sir. Oh. I would say I'd I'd have put him in a like a airtight bag filled with lye and then concreted it so that way he would have broken down and eaten inside of the bag. So you know, he, for someone who claims to not know much about the true crime community, you sure do seem like you know a lot. I studied forensics and assassinations and stuff like that, so I know quite a bit. Plus, I'm a chemistry person-ish. I mean, I, I, went to, I went to school for molecular biology for a year. Okay, Mr. Fancy. I'm over here just like... Murder podcast, murder podcast, documentaries, documentaries. <laughs> That's my life. But sound all fancy if you want to. Anyways, Timothy's body was covered with concrete and put into his garage. Um, honestly, the concrete did alleviate a lot of the smell. Now, a second victim did meet the same fate. We don't actually know his name. It's still an unknown victim. But the next two kills were employees of his. So they worked for the construction site. Most of these boys were under the age of 21 they were usually 15 to 21 of the age is like his favorite preference i guess 
Now, from 1975 to 1977, we have a list of a lot of men. Darlin Sampson, Randall Reffitt, Samuel Stapleton, Michael Bonin, William Carroll, Rick Johnston, Kenneth Parker, William Bundy, Michael Marino, Gregory Godsick, John Sheds, John Prestige, and two also un unidentified victims. Did we did we look into any of these felt relatives? You said William Bundy? Yes. Is that by any chance Ted Bundy's You just brother? learned about Ted Bundy today, sir? You yeah. thought he was a cannibal. I couldn't remember. I always get Ted Bundy and Buffalo Bill mixed up. One's a fictional character inspired by Ed Gain, and one is one of the like most popular, uh, I guess to say, serial killers. Oh. I or, thought I thought the guy like Buffalo Bill type thing, I thought he was a real like somewhat. He was inspired up. by a real character, but it was not Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy did not eat people, honey. I don't know how to tell you that. I just couldn't remember if Ted Bundy was a dude that tried on people's skin. Uh, Ed Gain actually did that. And okay. He was also the inspiration for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But we'll uh, get to him in another episode. I don't know. But. I All just... I know is I like Jack, Jack the Ripper. He was my favorite. You shouldn't have a favorite. Why not? I mean, technically that's how people say, like, don't have a favorite, you know? They say, like. You should have, like, a special interest in one, but having a favorite sounds wrong. No, I know. Like, when I was younger and all the Hannibal movies came out, Ugh. I was like, oh, he's my favorite. And then I found out he wasn't an actual real character. I was so depressed. Because I love it. Because, like, he was so smart and yet psychotic, yet so calm about it. I was like, if he was a real person, <laughs> That makes idol. me think of another serial killer who our listeners may know is like a big, gentle, giant kind of serial killer. Very smart. If you guys know, please comment down below. If you're listening on YouTube anyways. <laughs> but we'll get to another part. That's another, that's another episode. But we're talking about all the names I just named that were buried in this crawl space in the basement. That's a big crawl space. Yes, actually. But you can stack. They were usually stacked. So it's safe space that way. Um, they also were in different parts of the house, too. The crawl space is primarily where they were. Yeah. Um, and it also gave off a huge stink that his neighbors never were complaining about. That's why I made a lie. He actually did ask someone, like, what do I do about the horrible stink coming from my basement? He said it was just, like, build up of water and, like, causing mildew and smell and gross bugs. They said cover it in lye and stuff. But it didn't actually help. There well, yeah, so once you things. concreted it, it, it's not going to help. He didn't concrete everything. Because concrete is still, like a lot of people don't know, concrete is still porous. So anything that's in the concrete, such as a body, once it decomposes, it'll still seep through the concrete. Because concrete isn't, isn't completely sealed. It's a very porous material. Absolutely. And these were often so close together, especially two were in one day, actually. So, you know, there's not enough time for you to properly handle these things i guess if there's a proper way to handle gross stuff like that uh breaking bad did a pretty good way of doing it okay barrels yes <laughs> barrels and uh, hydrofluoric acid you were such on sidetrack today <laughs> sorry it's all right <laughs> i mean if you're gonna if you want to get dispose of something i mean if you have access to it pff, that's the way to go anyways Gacy's primary way of disposing of bodies were to tuck them in the house, in the crawl space, some were even in the kitchen, and the method in which he killed these men were strangulation, which all the tools and, I guess, toys is how I say that, that he had in the area, like ropes and chains and handcuffs and stuff, did lead to strangulation in the first place. So he really set these boys up as like, hey, let's play this game, I'll pay some money, and then he ended up killing them. Now, around this time, around 1977, John got a promotion, which allowed him to travel more. We don't actually think that he committed any crimes during this time once he started dating a woman. He was dating this woman, and after three months, they got engaged and moved in together. And this was a really good time because he committed no crimes. She really seemed a distraction for him. But once she and him called off their engagement and she moved out, it, she, he went on a rampage again. Like, he really went in. Do we know why it was called off? It, apparently, it was a mutual decision. I don't even know this woman's name. She kept a secret, but I guess it's pretty smart if, you know, this is what he's caught for. But the three months they were engaged and living together, he had no crimes. So, I mean, it seems like he gets distracted easily, and that's great. Anyways, that took a pause to his murder spree, but after they broke up, he went right back to it. In 1978, he assaulted one boy named Robert, and he actually did his first thing of torture. He included waterboarding in here where he would, you know, put water over the rag, put it in your face. Let you resuscitate, let you get a little breath, and do it all over again. But he felt guilty about this, so he ended up actually letting Robert live. He actually took him back to work afterwards and kind of tried to pay him off and make sure he wouldn't say anything. So I feel like the torture wasn't 
an, like what he expected it to be. He had been building up and he kept committing the same type of murder over and over again. I feel like he wanted something extra from this mm-hmm. one and then he didn't like what he got. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess that's how people get kinks. Like, you try something out, you don't like it, you're like, okay, yeah. not that one. Yeah. And that's expanded or uh, that type of feeling is exacerbated, especially with serial killer, because you find one method that works for you and it's just like almost like in a a sense of it it gets you off but after a while it starts doling so you feel the need to to um try and get that feeling back that you originally had so you branch off into new methods exactly why people think serial killers go from animals to humans Mm -hmm. because it wasn't because it just doesn't do them for it anymore right also he was running out of space in his house at this time so he started putting bodies in the river but he did run out of space in his house eventually. He also had progressed to chloroform, whips, and bondage. Apparently couldn't get some men to go with him, so he would chloroform them. And then bondage is stuff that seems pretty normal nowadays, but it was kind of erotic back in the day, you know, back in the 70s. But the police had started to become suspicious around this time since so many of these boys going missing did go with John or were working with him at some point. They questioned, like, hey, have you seen this employee? He said no. But eventually, John met a boy named Robert Peace. He was 15 years old, and John offered him a job, a higher-paying job working for him than he was making at the pharmacy. Is it weird to have a 15-year-old working at a pharmacy? I feel like it's nowadays, really young. N- nowadays, it, yeah, they, it wouldn't happen. Anyways, John offered him this job, and then he never returned. So this was like obviously a connection between Gacy and this young boy. Now, they put surveillance on him, and Gacy had fun with it. Like, he would, like, wave at him. And, like, when they came in the house to, like, look around, see what's going on, he would make jokes. He even actually was quoted as saying clowns can get away with murder because he was working as a party clown, you know? Which was, I mean, it's kind of ominous, kind of creepy. They've actually put that quote on billboards and stuff. I've seen it. It's really strange to put it on a billboard. But I guess he was right because he did get away with murder, you know? Anyways, this eventually led to them getting like a full warrant of the house once one of the officers inside his house like questioning him and doing the surveillance smelt the stench of death coming through the bathroom vents you know the smell of something that's decomposing even if you don't know it you know it i I don't know what it is whether it's just a human instinct or whatever but you know that kind of a foul stench okay now that you mention it i can kind of it's it's yeah. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, you really can't. It's just, you just you just know it. It's, it's kind of stale, a little sour, I guess. I don't know how yeah. to, it's kind Unless of Unless it's a skunk, though. That's okay. a whole different smell. No, but they're so cute. Anyways, the stench of death was coming through the bathroom vents, which led them to get a full warrant to, like, excavate, fully search the house, like, break it down, go in there. Something's in there, clearly rotting. And after that, Gacy actually had court for a civil trial. He ended up admitting to everything to his lawyers. Like, he sat there for hours telling everything down to where the bodies were buried. The next morning after he had gotten up, he had told us the lawyers, so he wasn't arrested that day. He had woken up. He didn't or not remember confessing anything. Meanwhile, the lawyer's like, hey, yo, we know it all. And <laughs> Gacy was like, what? What are you talking about? He did not remember confessing. I think it's probably your subconscious telling you, like, to say it and then you forget it the next day. But after that, like, he knew he was going down. So Gacy woke up. He left. He went and told some people, like, hey, I'm going down. Like, this is happening. I killed, like, 30 people is what he said. And the police were issued the search warrant to start fully searching his home. Gacy was arrested on site to make sure he did not take his own life so he could verify his confession. And they did excavate the house and find all the bodies. So he was charged with 33 murders. He did plead innocence by reason of insanity from his lawyers, but he was found competent to stand trial and that was not taken into account. He was arrested officially on December 22nd, 1979. And all the bodies were found in his home. 29 men were inside of his house and four men were found in the river. The scene traumatized a lot of the workers and people who came to excavate the home, police officers, first responders, morticians, and whatever. I don't know. Do morticians go inside the homes? Not morticians, no. no. Crime scheme. Yeah, you have okay, to, crime scheme yeah, costume, yeah. to collect the bodies. But apparently it was really traumatizing seeing all those bodies inside the house in different areas. So they needed therapy afterwards, which is... It's seen more in the 70s. I don't really hear about it nowadays that much, but I thought it was kind of notable. Yeah, I was going to say the morticians don't go inside, 
But like uh, forensics will come in and take pictures, and then when they're ready to move the bodies, the coroners will uh, come coroner, in. A coroner, that's what I meant. Coroners will come in and, and remove the bodies. Right. There was, I mean, there's a lot of pictures of the crime scene, and they really would just like did not have enough room for all the bodies. So they would just drag them out in a sheet instead of like full body bags and stuff to save on that. But um, obviously, after this, after he was charged with 33 murders, the house was demolished. There's actually a new house there now that you can look on Google Maps and find. It did take the jury two hours to find him guilty, and he was sentenced to death. He kept appealing it, of course, claiming he was insane, claiming innocence, claiming all that he could, which is actually very common in serial killers. He actually appealed this all the way up to the Supreme Court, but of course it failed. He did actually find a new passion in prison, which was arts. Oh, I have a sidetrack for you here in a minute, buddy. You're going to like this now. But he did a lot of art. Please tell me it wasn't face painting. It was clowns. He did other stuff, too. He did like a, a lot of Disney characters, like the Seven Dwarves. But he did a lot of self-portraits of him as Poker the Clown, all in kind of a similar pose. And fun fact for you, do you know the show Ghost Adventures? I've heard of it. I don't watch stuff like that, Okay, though. so, okay. Well, there's this dude who's, like, the host of Ghost Adventures who I was, like, obsessed with forever because his, his arms are, like, the size of bowling balls. Like, they are... If you could see Corlin right now, he's, like, making a really disappointed face in me. But his arms are, like, huge. And anyways, he's the host of <laughs> Ghost Adventures. I had a huge crush on him forever because his arms are so nice. But he actually owns a lot of the John Wayne Gacy artwork. And he actually, like, puts an exhibit so most people see it, which is just... Creepy. Yeah, but, like, a, a semi-celebrity owns a lot of John McGee's artwork. You can also buy prints on eBay, which I think is strange. I would have just burned it all. I wouldn't, have given, I wouldn't have given him the satisfaction of being remembered. Well, he does... I, I think he mailed things out from prison. So a lot of different people got it. Um, and also a lot of it was, like... Disney related, which I thought was weird, like seeing artwork of the Seven Dwarves next to his self-portrait of him as a clown was really strange. But yeah, he found a new artwork how be in prison, apparently, which was just weird. Now, on May 9th, 1994, he was executed. His last words were iconic. I mean, he's terrible. He's a piece of crap. But like, if you're going to go out, I mean, go out with a bang, I guess. His last words were kiss my ass. <laughs> I know, right? Like, I was, I was like, I don't know. Horrible human. But his body was actually examined afterwards to see if there was any brain damage or anything as a child since his father did hit him and he was really abusive to him. They didn't know if maybe that would cause trauma like a brain tumor to cause him to be this way. There was nothing found. And I do have a fun fact for you what his last meal was. Would you like to hear it? Sure. His last meal... Fried chicken. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm good. No need to celebrate. His last meal was a bucket of KFC fried chicken, fresh strawberries, some french fries, fried shrimp, and check this out, a Diet Coke. If I'm going to die in like an hour, give yeah. me a real Coke. I know. Aspartame's horrible for you. It's worse than, than just having a real Coke. But yeah, fruit, fries, fried shrimp, chicken, and Coke. What was his last meal? Out of all meal? of that, really fruit? I mean, I mean, I wouldn't pick strawberries. If all fruit, I'd probably pick like a banana or some blackberries. But I mean, fruit with everything else? I know. <laughs> give me this fried stuff, give me this diet soda and some fruit. <laughs> all I know is my if, if I had to choose between a last meal, it would be something that I would actually like. Or, on the other hand, I would just try and find something that like when they do the whole shock thing, I want it to like cook in my stomach and just smell like like potato wedges like you know they, they do they lethal open injection me up nowadays. and it just, boom, just smells. hey they do lethal injection nowadays you're not gonna like cook I don't know. okay I don't, know. I don't know but i want that corner to open me up and just smell like this man knew how to live despite raping and murdering what 35 children what is wrong with you sorry i made a a, a, a half gabriel iglesias uh quote what is wrong with you we're going to do a mini episode on death row last meals. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. I'll let you pick out one. I'll talk about like what I would want. Yeah. That'd be good. But anyways, do you have any notes on John McGacy? What do you think? I know you haven't heard this story before. I don't know. It gives me that just the old timey feel with the clowns and the big guy. I've seen so many different movies about where, you know, this big guy who acts as a clown, except for the only difference is he's a little slow in the head. So, you know, you accidentally you know all he wants to do is play with children because that's all he really is is a big ass big ass child and uh 
he actually ends up hurting them and blah, blah, blah. I've heard that in so many different yeah. movies and shows. I mean, I think we know where it came from. So, yeah. And that's kind of what I get. But he, I feel uh, like all these stories have to, like, all these movies have to spiral from some actual source. So it's pretty fitting. Yeah. It's pretty much for everything in life. But, like, he was really looked up to the community. He thought he was a great guy until the smell started that's coming out. That's how it out. always, man. That's how serial killers work. They're the greatest, the model people. Yeah, he was like in politics, like for the Democratic Party, like making a big deal around town, doing things for the neighborhood, labeling streetlights. But oh, all this time, street lights. like they were numbered, so if one was out, you could call and tell them what number was out. What you a know? loser. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for joining me on another episode. Yes, uh, keep tuning in. We're, we'll definitely have some more interesting ones for you. All right, bye. Bye.